boy, I just don't understand how in the world that, I mean, that that's just doesn't seem like a legitimate mode of interpretation or method. You know, I, boy, I, I've, I took a hermeneutics class. I never learned, never learned to do that. Well, that, that's too bad. That's too bad. Then maybe the problem was your hermeneutics class instead of John. You know, you get, you get the New Testament author side in Old Testament. Let's just say just generally here, any, any place in the New Testament. And there are places you wonder like, boy, how in the world did he get that out of that verse? And, and, and so we're, we're, we're tempted to think that, that the New Testament writer is just making stuff up. I have found, you know, by experience that that is, that's quite a premature interpretation, a premature conclusion to draw. Because sometimes what they're doing is so subtle, it might depend on a word or a form of a word, or this word used in conjunction with another word and not this other word over here. I mean, sometimes what they're doing is so subtle that it would never occur to us in terms of method to do what he just did, to do what we just saw him do. Okay, the, 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 the standard here is not us. Okay, we're not going to sit in judgment on John and say, well, he should have taken my hermeneutics class. My hermeneutics class in seminary, we were never taught to do that with the Old Testament. So I don't know about John. He's, you know, he's just like freewheeling out there. He should have read this or that book that we had assigned to us in seminary. Then he'd know how to use the grammatical historical method properly. That's nonsense. Okay, that's just nonsense. You know, we're not going to sit in judgment on, on, on John's strategy because John isn't going to do anything that other writers of his day aren't doing. What makes John different is that he, is, he you know, had all this time spent with Jesus. He's living in a post-Jesus context. So he's going to see certain things a little more clearly. But what we're going to find is that the, the general messianic character of what John is doing Others could have, could have done the same thing and did, even though those, their methods would not occur to us. Again, it's not how we're taught to do hermeneutics, you know, the grammatical historical method. And I'm not, I'm not here to poo-poo the grammatical historical method. I use it on every episode of the podcast, okay? But we have to realize that the rules that we create to help ourselves know how to approach the Bible did not exist in the first century. They're, our rules are not being followed by writers that lived 2,000 years ago. Okay, we are trying to, to understand how to do a particular task. And, and unfortunately, the way we teach hermeneutics, remember we just had John Hilbron, just the whole thing about relevance theory and semantics and, and metaphor over literal. You don't, you're not taught that in seminary either. But that is the way language works. Okay, it just is, you know, out of the gate by default, most of the time we're in metaphor mode as opposed to literal mode. But that is not how hermeneutics are taught. And, the, and, and that should change. I, I, I would like to see that change. And this is another area where I'd like to see hermeneutics, the way it's taught, change. Maybe we would benefit greatly if we, as part of a hermeneutics class, studied ancient first century approaches to the Bible. If, if we looked at the Old Testament in the New, I'll, I'll tell you what happens, just to be bluntly honest here. You know, you, you, have, you have people go to seminary, they take the hermeneutics class and their Bible study methods class, they learn the, the grammatical historical method, they probably learn how to use software and look up things and count the number of this and number of that, and, you know, all these procedural steps. And then a few of those people will later trickle into master of theology programs or doctoral studies and then then the floodgates open then you're forced to take classes on the old testament you know use by new testament writers and you see that the new testament writers aren't they didn't take our hermeneutics class they're doing something different they're not thinking the way about the text that we were just taught 3 years ago in our first semester seminary class on how to do this and, and I've actually seen this 
I've seen both things. I've seen this just explode people's minds like, this is just awesome. I finally can understand what in the world is going on in the Bible, you know, in this particular passage. And I've also seen the opposite. The New Testament writers are just cheating. This is all contrived and made up. You know, we, we, we didn't learn that this is not proper method. They're not using proper method. And so I, I can't look at the Bible positively the same way anymore. Okay, you need to, you need to, I would say you need to climb down the pole of your elitism at that point. And, you, you know, and, and I think this would be less of a problem if we just taught people initially in hermeneutics classes what the New Testament writers actually do with the Old Testament and how their methods are consistent with the methodology of their day. How, what, what were their strategies? How did they look at, at, at the content? Not how do we look at the content. Those are two quite different things. And there, there should be overlap between those things. But that's what typically happens. You know, you, you, get, you get one method of teaching hermeneutics you know, that, that you teach to everybody. And then when you, when you get to your doctoral students, oh, now we're going to show you what's really going on. I, I just I disagree with the methodology. I have had three hermeneutics classes in my experience, they were all, you know, one was in, in Bible college and the other two were d- two different seminaries. And I can tell you right now, that is what I just described is what happens. I have seen it over and over and over again. And what, we, what we've been trying to do leading up to this class is to illustrate, demonstrate, get, get in, in your heads how Old Testament content is repurposed, you know, the, the subtleties of it, the strategies of it, what the writers are doing, and, that, and that's what we're going to do in this whole series. So for those of you who are, you know, either now or maybe at some point later, oh, boy, I just don't understand how in the world that, I mean, that that's just doesn't seem like a legitimate mode of interpretation or method. You know, I, boy, I, I've, I took a hermeneutics class. I never learned, never learned to do that. Well, that, that's too bad. That's too bad. Then maybe the problem was your hermeneutics class instead of John. Maybe that's the answer, and I'm going to suggest it is.